what often gets in the way of a willingness to be with a feeling is a fusion with a thought. Like my mind says that I can't tolerate this feeling or it's dangerous or um, it means X, Y, Z. So that's the cognitive piece. And that's where the diffusion skills are really going to come in handy. And I begin to target diffusion from the very first session, from the intake. You can do this through just your language. So when you're doing the intake, you may say things like, um, so in this situation, then your mind said, everyone thinks you're a bad mom. Um, Then your mind told you all the horrible things that were going to happen, created the worst case scenario. Then you had the thought that, so just through that language, you're already modeling and building some diffusion. It's really interesting how clients will pretty quickly um, start to use that language in session as well, which is really cool to see when that happens. At some point, when we're targeting it more directly, I would do an exercise like really um, connect with this thought that I'm doing a halfway job at at home I'm, um, and connect with that thought and notice what that feels like in the body um, when you say it that way, I'm doing a halfway job at home. And then try it again, saying, I'm noticing I'm having the thought that I'm doing a halfway job at home. And notice how that feels. Often, immediately, people will describe um, that it feels like it has less power. Right? I want to point out, though, again, that these are functionally defined terms, diffusion. So if I did that technique and Jane says, oh, it feels really bad. I'm noticing I'm having, oh, that feels really bad too. Like, uh, you know, there's no actual difference there, then it wasn't diffusion. And it's not going to be the most workable move to try to convince Jane um, that she should be experiencing something different or to get stuck on that exercise and and repeat it. Just like, oh, okay. Notice that and pivot. Maybe um, a different exercise will be more effective. Like, well, let's give your mind a name. And what would it look like What if there was a character on TV that played your mind? Who would it be? It, all you're doing here is helping to get some separation from the self and the mind um, to get some distance. And it can bring a little bit of lightness to it as well. So you may do things like say the thoughts in a silly voice or sing it to the tune of happy birthday or something like that. Um, But I do want to also highlight here that you want to be cognizant of the timing of diffusion exercises, and you really want to make sure that you've heard Jane's concerns or the client's concerns and have uh, reflected or validated the experience that the client feels seen and heard that you've got understanding of how hard this is. It's the risk of a poorly timed or a poorly executed diffusion exercise is that it's experienced as invalidating. And obviously that's not at all what we're going for here. Um, again, there's endless number of diffusion exercises that you can find on the ACT website or in books. We're only limited by our own creativity of how we can target diffusion here. 